This is Nigerian Force Agricultural TV station. My name is Joshua Isha, welcoming you to the program Aqua Farming. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, Aqua Farming is a program to tell lots of telling you all you need to know that is in the water, be it fish, crab, shrimps, or whatever it is. But today happens to be quite interesting and quite different because it's a something you want to resonate with any day, any time. And what are we talking about? We're talking about, about homestead fish farming. Homestead fish farming is more like your backyard farming. That is to say, you really do not need a very big space to actually venture into this form of aquaculture. You can have as small space as you can, so you can actually venture into it if you are really passionate about trying to create money for your own self in whatsoever way. So stay tuned and take a look. Again, you're welcome back to the program. Of course, today we have our regular guest in the house talking about Gabriel Wase, a fish expert and a consultant who is going to be telling us about homestead fish farming. Mr. Gabriel, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah. What is homestead fish farming generally? Just like you said in your introduction, mm. it's nothing so complex. It's simply an aspect of fish farming that is conducted within uh, residential premises. Okay. It can be at the back of the house, it can be any part of your residential uh, dwelling. Uh, not indoor though, but outdoor. So this is a form of fish farming that is common, uh, maybe not in every part of the country yet, mm. but it's quite simple to carry out. And as many may feel that venturing into fish farming entails a lot of capital, why on a commercial scale it can be capital intensive, on a smaller scale, it is not necessarily so. So this is something that every family can be able to afford to cut, carry out. Because uh, you can start with as low as 10, 20, 100 fishes or as your capacity can carry. Mm. But this is simply an aspect of fish farming that is done just within your premises. And you can see presently where we are. You have seen that this type of farming has a lot of advantages mm. because in the same residence where you live, you don't have to employ extra labor. But of course, your farm is running. And you can see that it will help you to make maximum use of your space within your premises. And you're not, you're not, you don't have to hire extra hands elsewhere because it is made on a smaller scale or a small scale. So homestead fish farming simply entails farming of your fish within your living premises. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. This very sort of fish farming seems to me like it's more advisable or more, more common with retirees. What is your take on that? Uh, like I've said in my introductory statement, mm. every family can afford to do this mm. because this is not necessarily done on a large scale but rather on a smaller scale. In fact, as a matter of fact, I can say that this can be in form of a practice grant for those who want to go into full-fledged fish farming business. Mm -hmm. Because it gives you an opportunity to practice and to grow and to see the results from what you have done. So, and like I've said, it is done within your premises, which means that it does not entail you having to hire for extra hands. It does not entail you having to pay rent. In fact, a lot of advantages are accrued to this type of farming. And additionally also, when you engage in uh, homestead fish farming, the same water you are using in your household is the same water that is serving in your fish, meaning you have no extra bills to pay for you to achieve uh, good results in this aspect of farming. Again, you know, of course, there has been a campaign for food uh, security. And of course, you know that the government alone cannot do this. In our respective ways, each and every citizen has a role to play. And so when you do this, you are making available for yourself quality protein food for yourself. Of course, you know what you have raised up for yourself. You understand from day one, the practices involved, uh, the, 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 the healthiness of this uh, food. So you are consuming healthy food that is being produced by yourself. And at the same time, you have an opportunity of integration. As you can see, here we have a tarpaulin pond. 
here we have a farm. So the water that comes out from this farm is useful in other aspects. Mm. Of course, that's what we call integration because it's like a circle. So the waste from one aspect becomes useful. So this water serves, especially during dry season, it becomes a form of irrigation and also provides the needed manure for those crops you see around here. So it's another advantage that you stand to gain when you engage in this type of farming. Okay. And also, apart from that too, it gives you an opportunity to make extra income from what you do. Of course, you know that at the end of every harvest season, you might not be able to consume everything, so you have to sell some, making extra income at no extra cost, just within uh, the, the comfort of your residence. This can also be a form of job creation, especially for women who most, who most at times are at home. So while you are at home, you also have a business that is running for you. You know, when we talk about business, it must not always be that it has to bring money in millions. But the little that comes from here becomes your training ground and from your savings with time you can improve to get uh, a, a proper farm other than having just a homestead farm. All right, now, uh, uh, having a homestead farm you know, requires some um, amounts of capital. And of course, we already know that as we speak right now, almost every feed and every input used in um, farming fish is quite expensive. It's quite expensive. So, so now, uh, say you want to have a homestead fish farming that's going to accommodate like 200 to 100 fish. How much is required to actually embark on such? Like I would always say, the cost of operating a homestead fish farm is quite low compared to that that has to do with the regular fish farming systems. Uh, the reason being that here, like you have mentioned, feeding, that must definitely be the factor that could take in some bit of capital. But every other thing, in terms of land and utilities, it's something that you already have on your in the house that you're already making use of. And even in terms of feeding too, uh, you can as well be able to manipulate with some uh, household waste that can serve as feed for your fish. So you can see that before you embark on this farm, like you've said, if you want to stock 100, depending on the capacity you have, of course, you know, stocking density also has to do with your holding facility. So uh, you cannot just have maybe a 2 by 2 pond and you want to stock 200. That doesn't work. So first of all, the facility you have will determine the number of fish that you're going to stock. And then you also consider your capability or ability to be able to feed the number that you want to stock. So for instance, if you want to stock, say, 100 fish, for example, uh, like I've always said, if you have quality feed, for instance, you're going for commercial feed of good quality, it is expected that one kg of fish uh, feed consumed should give off one kg of flesh gain. So maybe some losses may come in, and you may not have exactly that, but something close to this. So if you are stocking 100 fish, that means you should be looking towards having to spend around 100 kg of feed or slightly higher to gain 1 kg, if that is your weight target. But of course, it's not every time that your target weight should be 1 kg. You might have a target of 900 grams, 800 grams or 700 grams, as the case may be. So depending on the target you have at harvest, that will determine uh, the quantity of feed that can be used. But at the same time, you can also make some manipulations by making available some kitchen waste to also supplement their feeding. Uh, maybe, for example, you can also uh, produce some maggot, which is quite ex uh, relatively cheap. Uh, from your pottery pan, from the, uh, the pottery waste, you can use that to generate maggot that also, um, uh, you know, reduce the cost of feeding. So a lot of advantages are available, and uh, I think it's one of the, the cheapest ways of uh, rearing fish uh, in the present day uh, economy. The Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, ASCN, coordinates the activities of research institutes and is responsible for supervision, regulation, coordination of research activities and programs of higher institutions in Nigeria. I'm Professor Hamidou Sharabatusin's assumption as Executive Secretary of ARCN in April 2020 has solidified the transformation of agriculture in Nigeria through strategic and meaningful execution of research fundings for improvement of the agricultural sector.
for grains. We have the parabolic solar dryers. These are specialized solar dryers used for drying agricultural produce such as whole grains, yam and cassava chips, fruits and vegetables more efficiently. It is made of a special material that concentrates the rays of the sun within the enclosure while eliminating harmful ultraviolet radiation. Products dried are free from contaminants and are hygienic. The parabolic shaped solar dryer is a need-based technology because virtually when we travel all over the country, you will see by the roadside, you see people drying all sorts of agricultural produce. Some spread their own on beer ground, and by the time the vehicles are moving, they raise dust, the dust stay on the products. The reptiles will come, they will hit whatever they can hit, drop their, uh, their feces and their urine on it, and the owner comes in the evening to pack everything together and still eat that product. And the product has been contaminated, and we feel this is not right, and it is part of our mandate to make sure that we set it right and that is was what led to this so that we can solve this problem at the grassroots level instead of drying by the roadside drying on just bare ground in their villages when they have this at the, as a drying center everybody in the community can bring their product there spread on the tree and they get it dry under hygienic condition that is covered and the dryer also have another property to screen the ultraviolet ray of the sun, which is also uh, can cause hazard to human health. Welcome to the Federal College of Land Resources Technology, Kuru, Jos, Plateau State. The atomic Absorption spectrophotometer, AFS, is an instrument which is used for the determination of metals that are dissolved in source. Radiation. Put it there. Welcome to production forms where we are going to take you around our production tanks and a practical fisheries and integrated tank to integrate the farming system with a banana and plantain and so many aquatic animals. Since then, Professor Sharabutu has operated as visionary captain by restoring the council's glory with the first ever agricultural television and radio station in Nigeria with well-equipped studios parading state-of-the-art equipment. Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria also has a brand new electronic library to further promote research and visualizations of deep thoughts on agricultural development in Nigeria. The museum located in the Senator Abdullahi Adamu Center is an agricultural museum saddled with the responsibility of keeping records of agricultural fundings, discoveries, researches for continuity and history purposes. ARCN Promoting Agriculture farming seems to me like it can actually serve as a guide for a beginner who wants to go large because it is always advisable to start small and then you grow big than to grow big and crash down exactly. you know how has this homestead fish farming actually helped in growing um, fish farmers who have uh, finally 
gain mastery as a result of starting from little. How has the testimonies been so far? Yes, uh, just like I said earlier, this serves as a training ground for those who want to go into full uh, uh, fish farming business because it gives you uh, the idea of how it is being run, the errors you probably are going to commit, you, you do that to a smaller fish or a smaller uh, unit of investment, and you are able to have an idea of what it entails to rare fish from start to finish and also the marketing aspect. So it means that you have done your own internship under yourself on a very little basis. That can be able to help you to improve when you venture into uh, uh, proper fish farming. And as, um, um, as a matter of fact, there are some persons who started this way and today they have seen the benefits, they have seen the interest have developed and so they have gone into full-fledged fish farming businesses. A lot of persons started this way and like I've said, this is something that every family is advised to have because it's not every time that you go to the market to buy. There are some of those things that, as you can see here, a lot of things that are not are made available just within these premises. But if these things are not put in place, the land is being wasted. So you can see that you have uh, you have a fish pond, you have um, some vegetables grown, you have some uh, uh, citrus here as well, you have mangoes, all within the same premises. So this is what we call integration, and it gives the farmer. Uh, the, 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 the idea of being conversant with the whole process of fish farming. And um, in case you run into trouble, you know that this is not something, it's something that you can bear because the investment is not high. And most persons do this for consumption, but you can as well do that for uh, business purposes. In fact, there is a, a woman I met that told me she started with 30 fish at the back of her house. And today she's a fish farmer. At first, she never wanted to go into fish farming, but she was sponsored to a training. And at that training, she was given 30 uh, pieces of fish seeds. So she came back and decided to give it a trial. She read this 30 fish, and at the end of the day, she sold it and she made money. She told me she sold this fish close to 60,000 naira. That was the money she realized. So she subtracted the cost of feeding and this, they realized some profit. And that is where her interest in fish farming spiked. And today she's into full fish farming. So like I've said, it's an opportunity for the farmer to develop himself, to be familiar with the process, and to build the interest and resilience to go into proper fish farming. And for those who are already into it, I feel that they are already contributing a lot to themselves and also to society uh, in the sense that they have they have minimized the waste of land and space in their own premises. They have also been able to provide for themselves what is needed, the protein they need for their families and also for those uh, around them and several other benefits which they have derived. So homestead fish farming is something that people should not feel uh, onto your own land or you have a, a, a whole big space or plot of land before you can go into. No, even if you are a tenant, like you can see, this is a tarpaulin, it's a movable, uh, mobile pond. Even if you are a tenant, it's something you can do. So once you are living, you can fold your tarpaulin and go with it elsewhere, where, wherever you are going. So this is something that everybody can actually venture into. In your own opinion now, seeing that this very sort of farming really does not need um, labor, like employing some extra hands, um, how time consuming is this very venture when it comes to you doing it yourself? Yes, uh, uh, I can say that it's quite uh, uh, easy to, to carry out uh, because the labor involvement is not much. Um, you know, everything you need is simply the feeding and then the change of water, which is, you know, change of water is not um, every day. Depending on the stocking density, uh, change of water can be twice in a week. Uh, except for feeding, which even if you as a civil servant, uh, you feed your fish in the morning, you go to the office, you come back evening, you feed your fish. So it doesn't even obstruct your other businesses or schedules uh, because the, what is required of you is just to change the water, is for you to provide the feeding, which you can do that twice a day for feeding, and then for water change uh, based on need, but it cannot uh, probably twice a week you can do that. So it's something that does not prevent you from doing other, uh, running uh, other businesses at all. Okay, now um, 
people are a bit skeptical when it comes seeing that uh, sometimes they feel uh, the 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 waste of the fish can actually amount to you know causing some sort of pollution in the environment uh, like how can one manage that very Yes, like I've said, that gives you an opportunity to carry out what you call farm integration. Farm integration does not necessarily uh, mean that you are having a very large farm compressing of different units and different aspects, uh, you know. It can be in bits and in bits. What you see around these premises is integration. You are having a pond, you are having some vegetables, you have some crops, you have poultry, you have rabbitry, all within the same space. And the waste from this fish is serving as manure and provides irrigation water for those vegetables. The waste, the, uh, waste from the poultry can be used, like I've said earlier, to generate maggot that can also serve as feed for this fish, reducing your cost of feeding. So all of these are, are interconnected and it takes away the problem of pollution. Because the water is not just discharged into the environment, the water is discharged into uh, uh, the vegetable farm where it provides nutrient and irrigation, especially during dry season where water becomes scarce. So it does not really pose uh, much danger. Uh, the only thing could be that you have no, you know, there's no provision for expansion if you want to grow because of your constraint within a particular uh, space. Uh, but apart from that, it does not really pose much danger in terms of disadvantages. But there are enormous advantages as earlier highlighted. Okay. There are no much disadvantages when it comes to homestead fish farming. That is what I am meant to understand. Now, how can someone efficiently, my last question now, efficiently be able to have a proper, prosperous homestead fish farm? That's simple. Number one, you have residents, and everybody, um, assumably, has a home. So with a home, there is always an empty space in the home. So that empty space is where you begin. If you have a very little space, you may wish to call someone to take a measurement of that place to be able to know what size of pond can fit in. It can be any, it can be plastic. It can be, in fact, people have even started with those small plastic they used to fetch water. People have done it because somebody has put 12 fish, 12 pieces of fish for family consumption and they have read them to table size and they've eaten them. So even with that, you can begin. So for you to be successful in this, just make use of the, any little space you have free within your premises. Get someone to take the measurement for you so you know if you want to construct uh, maybe a, a proper pond or if you simply want to use a plastic rubber, you can go ahead and do it. Position it there, channel your water to wherever. If you have the provision to integrate other aspects of farming other than fish, you can do that as you can see here. But if you don't, know, if you don't have such um, you know, ample of space, uh, you can simply fit in your plastic or your container, wherever, whichever that is going to contain the fish. And then... Uh, you channel the water to wherever drainage uh, that is within your area. And of course, because this is not on a large scale, it is not going to bring problems of pollution, of environment, because how frequent are you going to discharge the water? And the water is not to be discharged when it is very dirty or contains. And you know, of course, you're not putting in a lot of uh, chemicals in there as well. It's simply water and feed. So the water that is coming out poses no danger. And once you do all of this, you stock in your fish, you feed them in a few months' time, you, have, you are ready for harvest. If you are there for consumption, fine. If you want to take them to the market, you also make income. Finally, what's your advice to people who have been looking forward to having a space, renting a space, getting a space, before they can venture into fish farming as regards seeing that homestead is actually more like a nursery where you can actually grow to that very aspect? What's your advice to them? I, my advice to them is that they don't have to wait until they have a good space. Wherever you reside, wherever you reside, start small. Start at that point where you are. Like I've said, no matter how little that space is, even if it means using a plastic bucket, for, provided you have the interest, begin. If you can stock five pieces, can stock ten pieces, it's progress. It is better for you to make trier with something that is quite little than do so with something that is large. 
So don't wait until you have a proper space. The little space you have begin from there. Get your container, put your fish in, give them water, give them feed. You are a farmer. Many thanks for staying with us on Nigeria's first agricultural TV station where we've been discussing with none other but the regular on this very program, Aqua Farming, Gebra Wase, a fish consultant and an expert as well where we talk about homestead fish farming that comprises you starting little in your own backyard, in your own home, no matter how little, it can be five fishes, who knows, it might be the next big fish farmer. Thank you so much again, Mr. Wase, for coming you're through. Welcome. We Thank hope you will oblige us again and again as you've always been. Thank you. Thank you. On that note, we come to the end of the program. Many thanks for staying with us on your first agricultural TV station. And of course, on behalf of the crew members who made it possible, Mr. Sheyi Erubusi, who is behind the camera, and of course, to our uh, program's uh, coordinator, Mr. Inde Shwaga, who hosted us in his house. Thank you for staying through. See you same time, station. Bye for now.